Thanks much. Uh, you all hear me? Good. Yes, sir. Um, okay, thank you, Chairman Lynch. I want to thank each of our witnesses for being here today, and I want to thank each of you for your service. We're here today facing dire circumstances, a threat to freedom and Western values on a scale we haven't seen in decades. There was a slight show of hope. Russia said it had begun to relocate troops back to their home garrisons, but the NATO, General, the NATO Secretary General said he's not really seen any signs of movement or de-escalation. Then Putin announced that there was an act of genocide going on in Eastern Ukraine. I can't imagine what that means. And then the Russian parliament passed a bill recognizing the Donbas rebel groups. It does not appear troops have removed. This is not de-escalation. Words without action ring hollow and Russian words are not to be trusted. As it stands now, Russia and President Putin stand ready to invade Ukraine, topple the most pro-Western government Ukraine has ever had, and install a puppet government and deal a blow to free countries around the world. These are the moves of a ruthless autocrat and must be condemned with the strongest language. Let me be clear. The while invasion of Ukraine is incompatible with international law and we met with swift and forceful sanctions from the US and NATO, no US troops should step foot in Ukraine. This does not mean we cannot or should not support Ukraine. The United States and our allies should continue to apply, continue to supply Ukraine with defensive weapons and support. We should shore up support with our NATO allies and ensure we speak as one voice. We should share information where we can with Ukraine to help them prepare for any Russian incursion. Recently declassified information suggested Russia will incorporate information, cyber and kinetic warfare in its, in its assault on Ukraine. This could include a false flag in which Russia manufactures a cause by staging fake video of a Ukrainian attack on Russians to include actors portraying corpses. Again, this is not the work of a president, but of an autocrat who should have no role on the international stage. The Biden administration has spent months trying to defuse the situation with little or no success. That is because the president and Secretary Blinken are doing so from a position of weakness. They dropped sanctions on Nord Stream 2. They forecasted a lack of desire to implement proactive sanctions against Putin, and they've continued to allow allies, particularly Germany, to be easily fractured. And they continue to beg Putin for diplomacy. Um, I don't think Putin can be met with, with weakness. All of this is colored in the background by the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan that kind of puts a cloud over, uh, I think, the Biden administration. I think what's going on in our southern border, you know, kind of an unprecedented open border sort of thing, where tens of thousands of people come here every month, also screams weakness. Um, President Biden should have put more economic pressure on earlier. He should have shored up support within NATO um, with regard to Nord Stream 2. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can assist Ukraine while taking concrete steps to improve our negotiating position with Putin while preparing to defend NATO. The world is watching, the Ayatollah is watching, uh, the Chinese president is watching, North Korea is watching. Um, and this is what we have when we have weakness already displayed. Weakness shows a threat to Israel, to Taiwan, and South Korea. Our allies are relying on us. I hope we stand ready to defend freedom. This is a scary part of the world. You know, I remind my colleagues what happened, um, the relations between the Soviet Union and Ukraine in the early 30s, where you know, 4 million to well over 4 million people starved to death. Um, I hope we won't go overboard in appeasing the world's buddies. Before I yield back, I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to place in the record a statement from Ranking Member Comer. Thank you, and I yield back. 